But there's a much deeper issue here. There's a much deeper issue. And I don't know. And I, I talked about this. I talked about this on a podcast and I haven't heard too many people. Well, I haven't heard anybody say this, but I'm going to share it with you. And then I'm going to talk about how this relates to our topic for this evening. OK, this is probably my final um, thing that I'm going to um, talk about. All right. The final thing. And I, I think there's one little other example. OK, so follow me. OK, so. One of the reasons I was saying in the podcast, I said the reason why the WNB, I went into the whole history of the NBA and the different changes it went through and all this to get to where it is, where it is today, right? Um, it, NBA didn't start off as a black team, you know I mean, or a black league. It was a white league. Black folks in that, when the NBA, you know, when basketball was first becoming a thing, black people were more into baseball. They weren't into, into basketball, but then, over the years, it became a thing. They had to break race barriers and all that stuff. So okay, so I went through all of that, right? But then, uh, so for the WNBA is basically building on top of all of that. Now, the WNBA, so when people look at sports, right? When they typically are looking at um, sports like football or, or basketball in particular, I would say to a certain extent, um, soccer. Um, but definitely uh, sports like football and um, basketball. Those sports, the 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 baseline that they created as far as getting people involved and excited about it is they created the ideal player all these years, and the ideal player was a strong male. You know, um, you know, doing all the things that males do, you know, the slam dunking and all that other stuff, you know, all the things, the aggressiveness, you know, we love seeing that. And so that's all people, when they look at these sports, that's what they, sports like basketball and football, that's what they're looking for, that aggressiveness and all of that stuff, right? So then when the female versions of these, um, well, not football, not so much football, but basketball in particular, when base when basketball came into the play into the picture where they said okay we're gonna do a female league, I think they actually started one a long time ago and I don't think it took off too well. They were it was like a test a trial run, but I don't think it took off. But then they tried it did it again and this time they said it stuck. So it was it's doing well. It, it you know for the longest time it just wasn't it just wasn't. Only in the last few years the WNBA has actually been going on an upswing right. And um, and I would say that's part of that is due to the fact of people are attitudes are starting to change. Right. Um, because you've always had some very good players out there, you know, uh, when it comes to uh, women's basketball. Um, now, here's the thing. Who's the dominant audience with these sports? The dominant audience in these sports are mainly going to be white people. And when I say the dominant audience, I'm talking ticket sales. I'm also talking, you know, um, season passes or whatever. Like when it comes to, you know, if you get the, if I don't know if the cable companies, if they offer season passes for WNBA, maybe they do, maybe they don't. But I'm talking those that really drop the money on a seasonal basis for those games. Most cases, they're going to be white people. OK, most of the time they're going to be white people. Um, white people do not want to see a league full of black women that are act that are dykes and butches. Okay, I'm just gonna be. I'm just telling you totally. On they have no interest in seeing that. And some people may be like, "Oh my God!" You no, they don't. Want, let's be honest. And I have a whole lot of examples to give you. OK. White people don't want they make that extremely clear. They don't want to see that. So they're not going to invest in it. The only reason why all of a sudden now, now all of a sudden Caitlin comes into the picture and now all of a sudden white people are engaged into it. Why? It's because they actually see. One, someone that looks like them, that's pretty good. And B, she ain't no dyke. I'm just talking. You, you're going to get what you get when you come here. Okay. I'm just telling you. 
they're not other, if she was a dyke, they would not have any interest, trust me. And no, they wouldn't be interested in that. Now, that's not to say that white people don't engage, you know, aren't in the LGBT thing, please. They're in that. But it's the mindset of people who watch sports. When they watch sports, they there's already a custom that they have is they already been programmed. Okay, when I watch sports, if I want to watch aggressive sports, I want to see this. This is what I want to see on the court. I don't want to see a bunch of black women who are basically, you know, look acting and looking like men. Okay. They, and they're not going to invest in that. Okay. Now, you, so some of y'all, you may think that I sound crazy right now. You may think, well, wait a minute. I got something to say. Well, trust and know I have someone here. Um, this is an article that was written uh, about seven years ago who can personally attest to what some of a lot of what I'm saying right now. And um, let me bring that article up on the screen here and I'm going to show you. I remember this lady here, Candace Wiggins. And we're going to read this article here. Candace Wiggins, she said, I was bullied for being straight in 98% gay WNBA. All right. And then I'm just going to jump into the article here. Um, let's go into it. It says, Candace Wiggins, the former Stanford University basketball star who retired from professional basketball last year. This was written back in like 2018. Um, claimed it, that she was targeted for harassment during the eight-year WNBA career because she was heterosexual. Wiggins, who turned 30 last week, described a very, very harmful culture of the WNBA in an interview with the San Diego Union Trib Tribune published on Monday. It wasn't like my dreams came true in the WNBA. It was quite the opposite, says Wiggins, who announced her retirement last March while considering a contract extension from the New York Liberty. I wanted to play two more seasons of the WNBA, but the experience didn't lend itself to my mental state. It was a depressing state in the WNBA. It's not watched. Our value is diminished. It can be quite hard. I didn't like the culture inside the WNBA and without revealing too much, it was toxic for me. My spirit was being broken. That's what she's saying here. Wiggins, a four-time All-American guard who graduated from as Stanford's all-time leading scorer, was chosen by the Minnesota Lynx with the number three pick in the 2008 draft. She averaged about 15.7 points as a rookie, capturing six Women of the Year honors and a 13.1 um, points during her sophomore campaign. She suffered a season-ending torn Achilles tendon early in 2010 season and was limited to a deep reserve um, role in helping the Lynx to the club's first ever championship in 2011. But injuries weren't the only part of the problem. I want you to pay attention to this for the Southern California native who described her difficulties assimilating to the league that she says consists predominantly of gay women. This is her. Me being heterosexual and straight and being vocal in my identity as a straight woman was huge. Wiggins told the Union Tribune, I would say 98% of the women in the WNBA are gay women. It was a conformist type of place. There was a whole different set of rules they, the other players, could apply. There was a lot of jealousy and competition. Oh, y'all didn't even read that. You didn't even hear what I just said. She said there was a lot of jealousy and competition and we're all fighting for crumbs, Wiggins added. The way I looked and the way I played, those things contributed to the tension. People were deliberately trying to hurt me all the time. I had never been called the B word so many times in my life than I was my in my rookie season. Well, gee, that sounds kind of familiar to someone else we know this season, don't it? I told you, that's why I said I don't get, you may get caught up in a racial angle. I'm not. I'm looking at the, I'm just looking at the raw facts here. 
Let me read that part again. People were deliberately trying to hurt me all the time. I had never been called the B word so many times in my life than I was in my rookie season. I had never been thrown to the ground. Hmm, that sounds familiar. So much. The message was, we want you to know we don't like you. It comes to a point where you get compared so much to the men, you come to mirror the men, she said. So many people think you have to look like a man, play like a man to get respect. I was the opposite. I was proud to be a woman and it didn't fit well in that culture. I wonder why this got memory hold. I wonder why nobody brought this article up. I wonder why. Wiggins, who ended her career with one season stints with the Tulsa Shock, um, Los Angeles Sparks and the Liberty also played on pro teams in Spain, Turkey, Israel, and Greece, where she helped Sony. Uh, I don't know for the first um, Euro cup women's championship in 2010, her positive experience experiences abroad cast her WNBA experience into a particularly harsh light. Nobody cares about the WNBA. Wiggins says viewership is minimal. Ticket sales are very low. They give away tickets and people don't come to the game. Wiggins, who says she is penning a memoir. Okay, she talked about that, right? She's going to pen a book. I haven't, I, I tried to look for it. I was like, I'll buy it right now. Shoot. Um, okay, and I'll just skip to the last one. She said, um, I try to be, I, I try to be really sensitive. I'm not trying to crush anyone's dreams or aspirations or the dreams of the WNBA. I want things to be great. But at the same time, it's important for me to be honest in my reflections. Yeah, this was um, uh, written back in 2018. It was, they said seven years, 2017, sorry, 2017. And you could take a screenshot of that. Maybe you can look it up or whatever. I remember, I remember when she came out with this. When I tell you that women went in on her, they went in on her. They barbecued her behind over this. Because she was telling her truth. So, so like I said, again, the, the audience that these professional teams target when they do their live games, they're targeting the people who got the money to pay all of this all this crazy amount of money to go to an NFL game. It's it's a ridiculous amount of money to get an NFL ticket. Same thing with NBA. Now WNBA, you can still get in right now, but you know, in WNBA, like I said, has been on an upswing for the past few years. But they still got a long ways to go. But none of the people the sports commentators or whatever that I heard on this topic, nobody touched this topic. Nobody touched this, but it's true. And like I said, the demographic that they are trying to attract is the demographic that has the money and who has the money to do this kind of stuff, to uh, to watch this kind of stuff. It's white people. And they don't want to see that. At the end of the day, you're right, Team Truth. Exactly. At the end of the day, it's a plantation. You, th- these leagues were designed for the entertainment of the people who want, who got the money to watch it like that. It wasn't you, black folks. Your position is to be on the court playing or being at the stand selling food. That's it. That's just raw truth. That's that's the position that's assigned for you. But these leagues at the end of the day, they're doing everything they're doing is because they want to get they they're they're um they're targeting the people who got the money. That's NBA, that's NFL, that's NHL, that's whomever. They trying to get the people who can who's willing to pay that kind of money. And the people who are willing to pay that kind of money, white people will show up for the NFL. They'll show up for NBA. They'll drop their money like it's nobody's business. And trust, I mean, if you've ever been like high school, uh, 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 women's basketball, they'll show up for that too. But it depends on what high schools though. 
right, for real. So they're not going to show up for that. And that's what Caitlin, when she came into the picture, she didn't represent that. And then, of course, white people, they notice the fact that, wow, she's a number one draft pick and she's white. Oh, shoot, let me look at that. So she's a curiosity. And so that's why they're all in on her right now. 